Hey everybody, Erica with One Berkshire, and we're here at the Norman Rockwell Museum, and I'm joined with the new chief educator. It's a new role. They made it just for her because she's that amazing. This is Mary Burley, and she's here. She's been here eight weeks? Eight weeks. Eight weeks. All of eight weeks. And so what I want to do in this Women in Business interview, we're going to learn a little bit about the Norman Rockwell Museum from a different level, like a different layer of that onion that you might not know just by walking through here. And we're going to connect it to some of Mary's passions and how she got here and why it matters to her. So that's, that's what today's Women in Business interview is going to be all about. So let's start with, talk to us about a little bit about where we are right now. What Fantastic. are we looking at? Well, first of all, welcome. Oh, and thank I'm, you. I'm so impressed that you produce a video every single day. Like, It's wow. been a long month, <laughs> but it's been so fun. I'm meeting the most amazing people. And it's so impressive. Yeah, it's awesome. Thanks so. to everybody who's been in a video with me because it's been so fun. And thank you for your interest in the Norman Rockwell Museum. Totally. Um, we're in Gallery 1 right now. Gallery and, 1. Uh, this is one of the main Rockwell galleries I'm going to pan uh, around while you're mentioning it. Uh, it'll be something else soon because we're, we're having a changeover. If you look through the galleries, you can see that... Yeah, that bright red wall back there is actually going to be a different color within a few days. Tomorrow. By tomorrow. Yes, yes. It's amazing. this is a really fast-acting team, and uh, just on Sunday, a very huge exhibit left, um, uh, Keepers of the Flame, which was uh, extraordinary. Uh, teachers teaching teachers, art uh, featuring N.C. Wyeth and, and Norman Rockwell and also Maxfield Parrish. Very ambitious. And, and that exhibit it's currently is currently coming of off the walls. It's coming off the walls, and it'll it, it'll exist digitally very soon. Oh, good. So so, so if you miss it, see, you can still yes, see it. Yes, you can see it digitally. Um, but it represents uh, some wonderful things about this team. It's an ambitious team working hard to help people make connections around illustrative art that haven't been made before, and that also help us think about um, humanity and and who we are and what we can be, and from a very positive place. Hopefully. Well, that, and that's been one of the things that, as we've talked before we turned the camera on, that has been amazing about how this museum and how your team is using what's here to really create some social justice and the world, social good in the world. Well, we really care about advancing conversations about how to be a better world, and that really, Norman Rockwell stood for that. He, he cared about all people, and, and he took on some hard topics. In the 1960s, he married his third wife, Molly, and she was a history teacher, and she mm. cared tremendously about civil rights. And so, so during that that period of his life, he he did some remarkable paintings, including yeah. We're going to turn and show you one because it kind of illustrates what Mary's talking about here. This is an important one. This is one that I love, and we talk about this painting with school groups all the time. But it's called New Kids on the Block, and as you can see, an African American family, well dressed, ready to play, um, are are moving into the block, and this um, they're white. Uh, neighbors are making sense of that moment. But Rockwell gave us some wonderful clues. If you notice the girl uh, on this we'll side, get a little closer. she's got a pink bow tie in her hair matching the dress of the um, of her, her friend, who will be a friend. Not to mention a dog and a cat. So a there's black some. black dog, a white cat. Um, there's some wonderful things happening there. And they're checking each other out. And, and at the end of the day, I think we have a lot of confidence that they're going to make friends. And we're not as clear how they're looking in the, in the Oh, peeking window through the window up there. What's going to happen there? And certainly the man who's um, unloading the moving cart is he's just straight ahead. Mm. Um, wondering how this is all going to turn out. But, but Rock, these are still issues today, and um, we have a lot of work to do to make it more inclusive. And you were earlier telling me that the museum even encompasses as part of its mission to take on this oh, kind of work. Would, would you like to hear about the Norman Rockwell mission? Well, you must carry yeah. the mission statement I, around I, with you, right? I mean, I that's just like, something you would do, right? It's as always, I, I'm very mission driven. Perfect. So perfect. Let's, let's go for that. Okay. Okay. The Norman Rockwell Museum presents, preserves, and studies the art of illustration and is a world resource for reflection, involvement, and discovery inspired by Norman Rockwell and the power of visual images to shape and reflect society. Mm. And here it gets better and better. Okay. The museum advances social good through the civic values of learning, respect, and inclusion and is committed to upholding the rights and dignity of all people through the universal messages of humanity and kindness portrayed by Norman Rockwell. That's and I amazing. I have to say, in yeah. eight weeks, that this mission is just everywhere. Wow. You, like, you're seeing it throughout the whole museum. I see it with the staff. I see it. Our visitors come in, and they have, it's, it, it's almost, it feels like a sacred space, actually. Wow. People come in and really have remarkable experiences making sense of 
um, what and so Ralph even the visitors who may or may not have read that mission statement, I they, they feel it in some I, way. I notice them feeling it. Yeah, nice. And, and it makes me very happy to be here. Good. So let's talk about you on that on that front. So something brought you here eight weeks ago. Like, who, tell us about you. Like, what's been your path to get here and, and yeah, so you know, I, I, why here, why now, all of that. And let's find a place where there's better light. Okay, yes, let's, let's do that. Um, so I studied uh, visual arts in college. Okay. But then I went to graduate school for education and spent 10 years in Cambridge at a place called Turk um, oh, yeah. doing research on math and science and writing curriculum. Here we go. If we science. stand here, the light is on our face. So we'll stand right here for a bit. Okay. Okay. And that was a great place to work. I got into uh, 75 schools in the Boston area. Um, worked so with in the Berkshires, but then you went away. Yeah, I graduated from Wyatt Mountain in 1983. Yep. Uh, went to, uh, went to um, Cambridge for almost 20 years, mm -hmm. and and then moved back with my family Yay, in 2004. we love these stories. It is, you know, we all aspire to come back, mm -hmm. and ideally with skills and mm -hmm. some opportunity to make a difference. And that actually was my hope always, that oh. I would come back and make a difference. So uh, in 2004, I started working for Berkshire Hills Regional School District, was a teacher of math. Um, so the same district where you went to school. Exactly. Nice. Different schools. Yes. So like Muddy Brook was a new school. Um, taught third grade, was director of learning and teaching, and then just finished a four-year stint as principal at Muddy Brook. Wow. Um, and really loved bringing the community into that school and, and making a difference for our whole population. That was a very big commitment of mine. So if any of you are wondering, where did Mary go when she left Moneybrook, now you know. She's at the Norman Rockwell I'm Museum, here. and she's the chief educator. I am. And so, so what drew you here? What drew me here is uh, this is a world-class, it's a mighty small team of people doing world-class work with global impact. Mm. And I think my kids had graduated from high school and were are now uh, two in college and one, gra one uh, a gra college graduate. And so it was time for me to... Um, to follow some of my own dreams and, wow. and take a job where I could travel and and uh, do some continue trying to make a difference, which is always the thread, the thread. for me. Yeah. Uh, um, but also take the combination of skills that I've developed over time and and really have an adventure. And and this is an adventure. Awesome. Like the, the illustrators who come through are remarkable, amazing people. The staff, amazing. I the got visitors. to interview here a couple of months ago. I got to interview Tony Dieterlitzi. Was He's that fun? such a character. Ah, oh I loved goodness. him. Yeah, he was really fun. Yes, and that actually, so I came to that exhibit. I met him at one of the openings. And I, Alex Ross, a few years ago, just amazing comic book artist. Um, he, I had one of his prints on my wall at school. Uh, oh so my I, gosh, when you got to meet him. I, yes, I got yeah. to meet him. I, well, I bought the print here at his okay, opening. Okay, cool. And then whenever kids came into the office and were in trouble, we had something really positive to talk nice. about. Nice, comics, great. <laughs> before, it's a good bonding before we, moment. Before, before we before bonded you on how put to, the hammer how down. To, <laughs> yeah. how to, how to be, as, uh, be a good person. Yeah. Um, so anyway. So uh, on, along your path, have you run into any... I'm sure you've run into some challenging situations. And any wisdom or things you've learned from your challenges that you could distill out for us that, that might be relevant Yeah, I think I mean, that's a really good question. Um, and, and I'm sure there's lots of good answers to it. But the, what I think about uh, all the time is um, you want to work with people who work hard. Mm. Uh, you want to, it's always more fun to be in a situation where you and others around you are being bold. Mm. And, and wow. then you also, it matters to, to work for the greater good. And if those, in my experience, if those three things are at play, that's a home run. Mm. And uh, Mookie Betts, feeding the homeless, F, you know. So, mm. so this is, that formula is one that I pay a lot of attention to. So um, like you, if you're evaluating a situation, you'll just look at all three of those components present and to what, to yeah. what extent. And if, if someone's giving you feedback and those components mm. are all at play, then that's useful feedback. You want to really pay attention. Um, if you have detractors who, where you might not feel like all of those things, then you, you still listen and you take it in, but you don't let it drive your gut feeling about mm. what you want to be doing. Nice. Um, and that, that's an important point we talked about earlier. It's, it's trusting your gut, but it's, there's a flip side of trusting your gut, which is also being able to weather the, the, out, the, the spectators, sort of, and their views and their opinions. And yeah, you'll never have 100% support. Um, especially if you're trying to make changes. Mm. And, and we live in such a complex... The other thing I would say is um, the most interesting work right now, I think, is sort of cross-sector, that we have so many challenges in mm. this world, and it takes collaboration. And so part of how I got to the museum, actually, is 
I worked for three, I worked very hard at Muddy Brook with arts organizations to bring uh, arts experiences to kids. That was mm. part of our formula for success. And for three years, we developed a project with the Common Rockwell Museum, which uh, we're expanding across the county wow. now. So it's fun to be on the other side of it. But those, those whether it's healthcare or arts organizations or bringing in volunteers from from wherever, right? Um, yeah, it's, it's almost it's, like if our if these challenges could be solved in a in a silo, they would by now. So the fact they still exist means that we need to go. That is such a good point. Yeah, we we have to go big. Yeah. And, and so collaborative skills and, and an openness to other and other experiences mm -hmm. and really hearing what other, you know, that, that's how we solve the hard problems. Yeah, and if we so. had tons more time, I mean, you did something like that at Muddy Brook. You kind of created this interdisciplinary system or cross-sector community-based system that really addressed some big challenges. The collaborative care. My friend Deb Bacino, actually, Dr. Bacino, an amazing person. I hope you have a chance to interview her. Mm -hmm. uh, she's the chief physician currently at McInnie. Wow. And she and I together built a system of collaborative care so that um, about 10% of the Muddy Brook population uh, and their families were, were benefiting from a team approach with the school, the physician's office, and, and providers. And yeah, we made, a, we made a big difference. And I think yeah. uh, last spring, 100% um, of our economically disadvantaged kids met their exceeded state standards. Uh, Muddy Brook was the only elementary school in the county that um, was a level one in terms of MCAS plus a certificate of, recommenda of commendation. Wow, um, that's huge, congratulations. Thank you, yeah, yeah. it took us a while to get there. To build that infrastructure, um, really, that could support. And particularly in a time when, when our demographics are changing, it required a lot yeah. of shifts from staff, but also uh, it, it, it required welcoming the community into the school. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, we're... Well, and that's great, because you're probably bringing that to this museum, too, is, is creative ways to welcome the community into this discussion, exactly this dialogue. Right. So as you would expect, audience development is a big project. Yeah. And I think part of what's so exciting about this museum is there's real recognition that Norman Rockwell was critically important, and the people who follow him are important. And mm. so now the orientation of the museum is to, is to think about illustration and, and really build a scholarly wow. um, effort around illustrative art. And look to the future and welcome welcome young artists. So, so the four freedoms. Uh, again, yeah, we'll end in there. Yeah, let's let's, let's go, go there. It's a fun. Place now you were be. telling me that we don't have the live work right now because These it's. Are posters, you because said it was somewhere. Yes, Where'd it's in Dearborn, Michigan. Okay. A really wonderful exhibit. Look so I'm going to pan around and show you the four freedoms. I'm I'm sure you're familiar or have heard reference to these, but they're called this because there's four uh, of them. There's four. Yeah, yes, there's four <laughs> of them, but also they uh, they. There, um, Rockwell painted them uh, to support a speech that, that uh, President Roosevelt gave in the 40s, mm. um, and and actually to to, buy, to sell war bonds. Right. Um, yes, some of them actually say buy war bonds at the bottom do. of them. Yes, and but but let's talk about the big ideas. Yeah. Because if there's ever a time to talk about freedom of worship, it's this mm. week. Um, yeah. Here we'll go closer to this one, and then we'll we'll get some of your final thoughts. On yeah. So our idea here is is like we live in a country that cares about including uh, lots of choice about who to worship mm -hmm. and, and there is no place for anger and hate. Mm -hmm. um, and just including period. Including like period. Making sure everybody feels included, whatever it's, that looks like. It's, that's who we want to be as Americans from, mm -hmm. from my perspective. And, and it seems like that was part of what Rockwell was doing with some Absolutely. of his talent. He, yes. And, and he, he, he went right in and, and um, gave us images to think through who we are and who we want to be. Mm. Um, and so that's, that's a great joy. Freedom, I love freedom of speech also. Here you have a, um, the story behind this one is kind of fun. Uh, this is, uh, as I understand it, this is a farmer who didn't actually want to build a school uh, uh -huh. because it was going to impact his, his taxes farm. in ways and his oh, farm his taxes. Okay. That, would be, that would be tough, uh, which is understandable. And but he's surrounded by white collar folks who are listening to him mm. um, share his opinion. Um, and I think Rockwell did some neat things. The ears are very big on the listeners. <laughs> uh, the farmer is proud and tall, and we love that. Mm. Um, but, but all voices are important, and it really doesn't matter uh, where you're from. If you're an American, we're all in this together. So tell us women in business who inspire you. In, okay. the in the Berkshires. I'm going to limit you to in the Berkshires. Okay, well, it's a big group. It is a big group. We've got amazing women here, as I'm noticing yeah. as I'm going out so, and doing so all the, the, the first big thing is you go to any meeting in the Berkshires about 
uh, on a topic that is to make things better, mm. filled with women who care. Yes. So yes. that is like, true. I, I challenge all of the people watching to, to go to some meetings and, and, want, and just observe, mm. and then become one of those people who cares and makes a difference. Um, but I do have some really specific folks um, a person I've been thinking a lot about this week is Phyllis Cohen. Mm -hmm. She is the um, she is a leader at the Jewish Federation of the Berkshires, um, and and I think the leader of the Jewish Women's Foundation there. Mm -hmm. And she called me a cold call uh, five years ago at Muddy Brook and saying, you know, we, we really want to make a difference in the community. And do you have any needs at Muddy Brook? And <laughs> and that turned into like forty volunteers coming wow. uh, to support literacy efforts to great effect. Um, and I think that uh, that is remarkable to me. Wow! And what and we need more Phyllises. Mm. Um, so, so she's yeah, because you said that her efforts and what she pulled together drastically improved the performance it helped, of your, like, yeah, scores on a human ability. level. I mean, our kids felt connected and cared for in ways that were spectacular, and also saw, had great enjoyment reading and, and developed skill. Yeah. Um, and and a, and a great team of staff at Money Brook also are part of that victory yeah. um, and connected with Phyllis in wonderful ways. But, but the fact that Phyllis walked in our door and said, I can help and I'm going to bring people. Bring my team with me. And that just uh, is remarkable. Mm. And um, I'm, I'm thinking a lot this week about my Jewish friends from around the country who are trying to talk with their kids about what happened mm. at the Tree of Life Synagogue. And, and I'm just thankful for all of the support of the Jewish community in the Berkshires to make it this a better place. Yes. Um, so that's one. Um, Deb Pacino, Dr. Pacino, who I worked with on collaborative care, a remarkable human. She works hard, is bold, and works for the greater good. Nice. Like There's all, your three. All she hits she's, all three. She is right there. She's that so sweet spot in the Venn diagram. She's winning the Clinician of the Year Award for um, physicians. Uh, tonight, actually, it's announced, and so, so uh, that's very exciting. Yay. Uh, Donna Elmendorf runs the um, Human Development Institute at Austin Riggs. Wow, yeah. She is never out front. You'll never, you'll never see her name uh, mm. splashed across any, but she is making great things happen and supporting people, wow. um, including myself at different times, just yeah. in, in, and just, just wonderful work. Uh, started the infant project at Fairview Hospital, which is part of our pipeline to having kids being kindergarten ready. Wow. Great stuff. Wow. Uh, Lisa Donovan at MCLA. I'm, I'm going past four here. But, All right. But Lisa, this is your last one. Okay. <laughs> Lisa is awesome, and she's leading efforts at MCLA to to ensure that kids all over the county have arts experiences. So I'm very so she's someone I'm really looking forward to doing more work with. Um, so there's many people. Well, so we can't end though without shouting out the leader, the female leader of this institution. That is absolutely right. So Lori Norton Moffat. I, I actually, I, I, she is a big reason why I wanted to work here. Over 31 years, she has uh, grown at a remarkable mm. institution. From this little country museum, uh, she's not only established Rockwell, but but she's built an amazing team that's ready to do even bolder work. Nice. Um, and she cares deeply about the greater good. And so that she she's that's inspiration enough to be here. So, so. as we as we walk out of here, tell us: is there anything you want to promote about the museum? That if if uh, is there something people can get involved in or come out and in um, ex yes, experience? So, so we uh, we have lots of programs that we're working on developing right now. We're going to start to uh, we'll have a series of of storytelling uh, programs and connected to each exhibit coming up in okay. the next year. Um, we have an immigration exhibit coming up. We have two naturalization ceremonies scheduled this year. Wow, here, um, taking yes. place here. Oh, that's June 14th, amazing. September 22nd, I think. And yeah, yeah. And uh, it's something about a polar bear. Yes. We, if you had more time, we would, we would go on a polar <laughs> bear There's a polar bear somewhere in this place. There is a polar yeah. bear. It's, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's down in the curatorial wing, so it would take some action to find it. Hidden um, away, but it will come out. It'll, yes, it'll and come so out November the 17th, okay. the art of adventure. Come to the museum and see 30-foot paintings with polar bears, rhinoceros. Uh, all kind of really great a action. wild mystical time. yeah yes. it's gonna be great so uh, excellent yeah so just remember there's always something new and exciting at the Rockwell Museum mm. and we would love to see you and now there's an so. amazing new chief educator so you, when you come here you'll be able to learn all kinds of things I certainly have today so this has been so fun thank you Mary so much fun. Yes, for thank being you. interviewed by us you're another amazing woman in business in the Berkshires and we're so grateful to have you here well thank you it's a pleasure all right bye everybody see you next time